I got a lot of requests for the return of the lava lamp, so here he is. So I heard someone say recently that uh, 2019 is the year of removing toxic people from your life. I don't know. I think that should be every year. But anyway, it reminded me of this story. If someone in your life is just like not bringing you any positivity and seems to be bringing you down and is a toxic person, it's okay to like break up with your friends. Honestly, it's better to have a small group of people who build you up instead of keeping around people who make things really unpleasant for you. This story starts quite a few years ago when I first moved to Boston. Um, I was having a really hard time finding a job, so I ended up applying to be a barista. Since I was new to the city, I also didn't really have any friends, so I thought it would be a cool way to like meet people in town and maybe become friends with some of my coworkers. And it turns out that I met some of the worst people I have ever met while working at this coffee shop. So anyway, I'm working one day and this girl walks in and sits down at the like barista bar where, you know, I'm pulling espresso shots and doing my thing. And she just starts talking to me like, we're already friends and she was so funny and it was just kind of refreshing to see someone be really outgoing and like make that initiative to start a conversation with me. So we're chatting throughout pretty much my entire shift that day and by the end of it she like gives me her phone number and asks me if I want to go out for drinks sometime and hang out and I was like hell yes new lady friend i have a hard time making friends and i have an even harder time making friends with women which really sucks because i love having women in my life so i was like very excited for this opportunity to have a new girlfriend and right away i noticed that she's um a little weird there's nothing wrong with weird though it actually kind of made me like her even more but she was just like super high energy all the time so i'm gonna call this girl amanda and soon enough, Amanda became like a staple in my life. Like she was just over at my apartment all the time. I was living with uh, my boyfriend at the time and she became really good friends with him. Not only did I have this cool new friend that wanted to hang out with me all the time, but also she quickly became friends with him. And it was pretty normal that like if I was out at work, she would hang out with him and like they would come meet up with me after work. And I actually really liked the fact that like my new friend got along with my boyfriend so much that they wanted to hang out even when I wasn't there. Now, that being said, <laughs> there were some red flags about her really early on. She's just way too intense and she was just really forceful in some weird ways. Like whatever she wanted to talk about, that's what she was gonna talk about. She would interrupt you at the beginning of a sentence to turn the conversation in a direction she wanted to go in. And she was really flirtatious, which didn't bother me. It was just like really weird. <laughs> she barely knew us, yet she would come over to our apartment and immediately take her shirt off and just be walking around in a sports bra and talking a lot about her body and trying to get us to like look at her body and make comments about her body. And she was really, really like, painfully skinny and I could just tell that she dealt with some body image issues so I kind of chalked it all up to that and you know any opportunity for me to build up the confidence for my friend I was like hell yeah if you want us to compliment your body to the point where you get partially undressed every time you come over I guess that I can do that for you. That stuff started to wear on me after a while. She was just so self-centered and rude and all this stuff that I found to be like quirky and interesting about her before became just so annoying. I'll never forget this one stupid experience that was really insignificant in the grand scheme of things but really sums up her personality. So we invite her over for dinner. She was having a really hard time holding a job. I wonder why. Obviously like we wanted to help her out. So we're like, hey, we're gonna make a nice dinner and you can come over and enjoy it with us. This was back in my meat eating days. And one of the things that was like a nice treat to do from time to time was to get a rotisserie chicken. She came over, opened up the rotisserie chicken and started eating 
all the chicken skin. Who does that? <laughs> we're both like, not yelling at her, but we're like, what, what are you doing? Why are you touching our dinner with your bare hands and eating the best part of it? And we're asking her to stop eating the chicken skin and she just keeps eating it. I was looking forward to the whole experience of that chicken and then it was just, she just ate half of it with her bare hands. We were looking at new apartments and we wanted to get a two bedroom so that we could have a bedroom and a like computer gaming room home office kind of spot. And she heard us say two bedrooms and apparently assumed that she was going to be moving in with us. And my stupid little wimp of a boyfriend at the time like wouldn't stick up for me at all. So I had to be the one to sit her down and say, look, like, this is our apartment that we're getting together. We're going from like a studio apartment to a two bedroom apartment so that we can be more comfortable. We're not doing it so that you can be our roommate. Like we would have asked you if we wanted that. And it was just really frustrating because I found myself playing bad cop with Amanda like all the time. And my boyfriend would just like, never ever stick up for me or agree with me or say any of the things that we were both thinking. I always had to be the one to like reset expectations with her. So it started to cause some tension between me and Amanda, which kind of made her friendship with my boyfriend at the time. Just to clarify, obviously we're not together anymore. Before I knew it, like she was just over at my house all the time when I was at work or when I just wasn't home. And honestly, it didn't bother me at first, but after a while, I think, I think anyone would be slightly bothered by that. It was just weird. There were a few other experiences with Amanda that started to happen that indicated that I was like, I don't, want to be friends with this girl anymore. One of which was on New Year's Eve. We invited her over while we had maybe like one or two other friends over just for a nice chill night. And I had mentioned to her casually during conversation sometime around then that I'm bisexual, which is not really something that I have many qualms about talking about. Like it's 2019 or at the time, I think it was like 2015. Either way, it's very socially acceptable. Like I just, most people just don't really have a reaction to that. No one really cares. So I didn't think that it was like on the top of her mind, but she kept bringing it up while we're hanging out with our friends on New Year's Eve until it got to midnight and she gets on her hands and knees and like crawls up to me and says, I think it's about time that we kiss. It's like the chicken skin all over again, but worse. My sexuality is in something that I put out there to impress or entertain people, you know? And no, I did not kiss her. I'm very not attracted to her. I've never been attracted to her. And even if I was, I was in a relationship with someone who was in the room at the time. How disrespectful is that? So I decide after that, I'm, I have to, I have to have a talk with Amanda. I was also a little mentally preoccupied with some problems in my relationship that had to do with health issues that I don't want to get into too much. Everything was fine. It was just like this, you know, paranoia that was causing tension in my relationship. So I was like, I'm just going to go out for a girl's night with Amanda. We can talk about New Year's Eve. We can talk about, you know, what's been on my mind lately. I can't even count how many times I tried to talk to her about just two things. I had two things all night that I wanted to talk to her about and she would not let me get a word in. We're at this bar in Fenway and I'm just sitting at this table crying like an idiot as she's explaining the entire storyline of Grey's Anatomy to me because that's what she wanted to talk about. Finally, I was able to like choke out in, you know, the, the smallest little summary what I was upset about and she hugged me and it was like this big dramatic thing. She was like, oh my God, I was so sorry. Like the most insincere apology I've ever heard in my entire life. We finally move into the new apartment. She comes over obviously. And she just casually makes a joke about all the serious stuff that I had tried to talk to her during our girls night about. Just like offhandedly makes the most tasteless joke ever. Like, haha, yeah, your girlfriend is just like so stressed about how you think you're gonna die soon. <laughs> I 
confided in you personally about this thing that was causing tension in my relationship and you just like brought it up in such a rude and tasteless way. I was so done with her at this point. Now, if you couldn't already tell from the foreshadowing of her hanging out with my partner at the time when I wasn't home, obviously there were some alternative motives there. I'm dumb and I did not realize that until this happened. So the three of us make plans to hang out one night after I'm done with work. They're hanging out at my apartment while I am working. They come and meet me, we have a lovely night. Um, we always had a lot more fun when it was the three of us because we could kind of like bounce off of each other and it wasn't like a one-on-one -on -one Amanda show. So pretty soon after that, my boyfriend tells me about what happened while I was at work. This still blows my mind that like she not only did this, but somehow thought it was completely okay to do. They're getting ready to come meet me. Um, he is in the bathroom brushing his teeth and she comes into the bathroom and stands behind him in the mirror. And I don't even remember what she asked him, something about like what she should wear, but she is completely topless. She walks up behind him covering her little titties like this, just completely topless. No bra, no sports bra, no shirt, nothing. With her titties out. Like, put those away. I just, that was, I was done. <laughs> so I confront her about what happened via text message because when I texted her and told her, hey, we need to talk, it's almost like she knew exactly what I wanted to talk to her about. It's almost like when you take your titties out in front of someone else's boyfriend, they're gonna be pissed and wanna talk to you about it. <laughs> I tried not to like totally lose it on her, but I wanted to be stern about what I was upset with her about. And she somehow found a way to turn it all on me and then accused me of threatening her because I just want to appear tough all the time. That's what she kept going back to. She was like, oh, you think that you're so tough. Like you just don't want me to, you want to scare me because you're obsessed with being tough. Little does she know because she never listened to me talk. So she doesn't know anything about me. But when I hear that someone is afraid of me or intimidated by me, or whatever, that breaks my heart. <laughs> like, it's just, it genuinely hurts me down to my core. So for her to say that, like, I wanted her to be afraid of me, I was like, no, <laughs> I want you to leave me alone and stop trying to f my boyfriend. Like, what are you doing? I asked her to come over and like drop off all the stuff that we had let her borrow. Especially like there was this t-shirt that we used to let our pet hedgehog sleep with and she had just passed away pretty close to then and I just like had this sentimental feeling towards this t-shirt and I wanted it back and I didn't want this jerk to have it. And she absolutely refused and then ended up like sneaking over to my house one day when I wasn't home so that she could give it to my boyfriend and like give him one final like hug and say how, you know, there's no hard feelings between them. And like, it would be so nice if they could just continue their friendship with each other if it weren't for me ruining it all. <coughs> anyway, moral of the story is uh, just cut toxic people out of your life. You don't even need to wait until they try to f your boyfriend to do it. You can just say like, hey, it's clear to me that I'm not that important to you and I'm not gaining that much out of our friendship. So I don't think this is a good, I don't think this is good. Hopefully conversations like that can make it so that you can move on from situations like that and like share your feelings with each other and overcome conflicts in your friendships. But sometimes you're having those problems in the first place because that person is just not a good person. Anyway, I hope you were entertained by that story. Um, don't eat other people's chicken skins. And I hope that no one else has similar experiences to this, but if you do, share in the comments below. Uh, you can vent, that's what we're here for. Anyway, thanks for watching and I will see you next time.